excited to be here at the Literary Conference because the Literary Consultancy has always uh, supported the best type of writing, supported access to everybody for the best kind of editing. But we all need to deal with digital publishing, we need to deal with e-books, we need to deal with social networking, and it's something that affects everybody, whatever part of the public industry you're in. So it's long overdue, this conference, and all credit to them for setting it up. Well, I don't know if you can hear the buzz, but there's a lot of chat and noise going on, real people actually talking to each other about digital, the digital world, which is kind of a bit ironic, but no, it's, it's, there's a real sense of excitement and so much to know about and so many people here to talk about it. And there are a lot of digital conferences that happen in the UK, but um, up until this point, they haven't actually sort of really addressed what is it that writers are looking for with all of this digital technology happening around us. And so we've constantly returned to it when we've pulled this program together, when we've looked at who to invite uh, to speak. It's who are going to give those answers, who are, going to, who are going to inspire people with those ideas. And this brings us to ask the question about is there anything intrinsic to literary language which would resist a computer. I agree with Linda that I think that Twitter and tweeting is delivering some of the things that I think many people thought that the internet and blogging might do. One of the things that we found is that uh, Twitter especially, but Facebook as well, allows for new writers to find a community. Now, I've got a sense from all of you that you have enjoyed finding that community and interacting with that community, but have you also found that you wanted to translate that into real life or has online been enough? The problem with many of the digital opportunities is that people put work out there before it's ready and you only have one chance to make a good first impression. So really spend your time thinking about what it is you want to say, what the story is, who your characters are, who you are as a writer. I have Julian who will be joined via Skype by Mike, we're hoping, uh, all the way from Australia. I've no idea what time of day it is over there so we'll see what state he's in. Hello everyone. I think so. Uh, yeah. I'm really prepared, so I hope I'm uh, on, the, on my game a little bit tonight. <laughs> so what I want to talk about is four key principles. It is striking that when we covered all the um, touchy-feely stuff about social media and social networking, we had a panel of women. And now we're talking about the controlling end, if you like, the media and getting the stuff out to the audience. We have a panel of men and I just wondered if why you thought that might be. There's never been a time when the book world hasn't been changing. The, the change may be very fast now. It's always been fast. I remember decades ago when the first hardback reached five pounds, there were headlines in the Evening Standard saying this is the end of hardback fiction because the retail price is five pounds. Bollocks, you know, the world goes on. Things are changing, but it, do, it doesn't knock out the previous model just because another one comes along. And when, the, you know, when times are challenging, we have to turn those challenges into opportunities. It's exciting, it's fun. So at least now writers don't have to write for, um, they don't have to write for agents, they don't have to write for publishers, they don't have to write for editors. Those people still all you know, perform valuable services, but really you can more focus on the reader. My experience with publishing is trying to get into sort of this exclusive club that you, you've heard about, and you, you show up at this club. If you are really persistent, you work your way up, and you get to one of the security guards and ask them, you know, what, what's the deal here? How do I get into the club? And they say, well, you know, we let people in uh, every once in a while, <laughs> you know. <laughs> The idea is um, a digital publishing house for German short literature. My first book just kind of grew from a very organic place and I just wrote it. The most successful way to get an Amazon review is you actually meet the person in the flesh. It took me a long time to, to get discovered, which is what this afternoon's about. Um, never give up, never stop, and listen to your feedback. So this is a, a Gambian sci-fi writer. Um, who hasn't had a novel out yet, but has done some fantastic sci-fi short stories based in Africa. The changes in the digital world are so quick that I think it's important to talk about them and, and to look at where we are, where we're going. And it's good to do that in the company of other people who work in literature. And so I was happy to be on the panel with Marina from the Caribbean and Uvashi from India. And of course, Ella, who's based here, but is originally from Zimbabwe. So it's a very global kind of perspective to look at the issues.
it very interesting to be part of the conference because I've never done one of those Canon Tales talks before. I've done a lot of public speaking, but I've never spoken to images. And there was so much choice when asked to present just 20 images as, a, as an aspect of you know my life in books. So it was a marvelous displacement activity. I spent so much time going through old photographs. It's working. We have on the one side the literary agents. <laughs> Not that we've been influenced by Simon Cowell or anything, but we did want to get a bit of dynamic going in the room. And on the other, the publishers. Um, first up is Laura Grace. Congratulations. The diner is the all night fake 1950s kind. Squeezing himself to keep his blood circulating. Picture refers to an Indian farming practice called monkey on a stick. I took a deep breath and plunged into the heaving cloisters. And when the moon is at its highest point, the sounds of the night will tell me of all the things that could be seen and heard during the day. I think you're an excellent writer, having said that. that it's something that clearly fascinates you. I thought the book suffered from having far too much plot. Sometimes the story becomes secondary as the book goes on. But it's just not my cup of tea, that's all. I just wouldn't know how to pitch it to a publisher. It's becoming important to be able to sell yourself in public. Nice style, very assured writing, great momentum. I'd be happy to read it. Thank you very much. And I'm not surprised it wasn't unanimous. And I'd really um, like to uh, congratulate the other uh, finalists as well. I've learned that it's um, worth going through the pain to pitch your work and hopefully get some recognition at the end of it. What I found most interesting about the last couple of days is just finding out a little bit more about what it entails to self-publish. From this conference, I think just hearing other writers, both successful writers and maybe not yet so successful writers, their stories just brings to the forefront the reality of today's world of writing, when you're kind of alienated from it, when you're traveling so much, it's nice to come in contact with it when you're in London because there's so much happening here. It's such a fast changing world and there were so many interesting observations, predictions made today. It'd just be fascinating to see in a year's time how things have turned out, what came true, what turned out differently. Also, how many of the audience members might be up on stage. Most published writers want to be published, to continue to be published by good publishers who are prepared to help us sell our books. They need to work with us to do that. And the other thing I think will happen and should happen is that there will become some more differentiation between the good self-published stuff and the um, not so good self-published stuff. And the readers will be the ones who make those choices and quite right too. And I think what I'm a lot more interested in are all of the opportunities out there and, and actually the challenges because if we're having to face um, digital publishing and to adjust our contracts and our editing to do with that, it makes us better publishers because we're having to think a lot. People seem to like contact with writers, you know, people really seem to like a kind of interaction with writers that's something quite separate from actually reading reading books and that may well be a function that writers have in the future. I don't think that literature is going to stop or indeed change in its fundamental um, purpose which is to tell a story and to communicate with people and that's the really great thing that's coming out of this conference is actually the fundamentals of storytelling are not going to change, they're not really under challenge but the technologies are putting up huge challenges to the social constructions of how those stories are told. <laughs>